Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, sometimes referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. In this video, I want to talk about beginner sewers. You know, people that are just starting off sewing often will find SureFit Designs because they're looking for a fitting solution, and of course SureFit Designs can offer that. And what we do with SureFit Designs, if you're brand new to us, is that you take your measurements, you apply your actual measurements onto a master pattern, you connect your dots together, and your resulting pattern is what I call your body blueprint, and in the industry it's called a sloper. And then with SureFit Designs, I will show you how to take that body blueprint and design various styles of garments, whether it be the blouse that I'm showing here, the blouse that I'm wearing, pants, skirt, jackets, coats, you can do anything with SureFit Designs. But then, typically, a beginner will email me and say, but Glenda, how do I sew it together? I'm so used to working with commercial patterns, and I really don't know all the steps. Well, you know something? As a beginner, I certainly understand that you do need a guide to help you sew things together. And there are many areas within the SureFit Designs fitting system that do give sewing directions. And one of the places where you're going to see very clear, concise sewing directions is in all of our newer fashion leaflets, and that's found in our digital e-goods. And then within the instruction books, there are also sewing directions but not for every style, because some of the instructions will just tell you how to change something, like change a, a scoop neck to a v-neck, or change a set-in sleeve to a um, raglan sleeve. Well, I don't always give sewing directions for that, because I do assume that you have some level of beginning knowledge of how to put a garment together. But, of course, our knowledge of sewing a garment together is going to increase with experience. And you know the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, that certainly is the case with any sewing experience. But what I'm going to do in this next series of videos is start a beginning sewing series for you. And so I am going to be showing you techniques of how to sew a seam, how to sew a dart, how to press properly, how to add in zippers, how to sew them. I mean, it's just, there's going to be a lot of things in this beginning sewing series. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you've sewn the garment together and sewn it successfully with SureFit Designs, when you put it on, it's going to fit you. And that's our ultimate goal. So oftentimes I hear beginners say, I just, you know, commercial patterns aren't fitting me the way I'd like them to. I try to ready to wear and nothing fits my body shape. And so with SureFit Designs, we're going to help you out and not only get you a good fit, but I am going to show you, as I said, sewing uh, techniques and tips on how to put it all together. One of the things that we're going to do is start with an analysis of fabric. And this will just be a quick overview, um, because when you're a beginner, you do need to be aware of what you're buying when you're in a fabric store. So let's take a look at some of these samples that I've got here. This is a piece of chambray cotton. And it's a great piece for sewing a shirt or a blouse. There's no give, no stretch to it. And it doesn't ravel a lot. When I take a look at this edge, it's not, it's not a um, fabric that's going to ravel tremendously. It does require some seam finishing, but if you see a piece of fabric hanging on a bolt, and the cut edge of it has long fraying fibers coming off of it, it likely means it's going to be more challenging to sew with and require some serious seam finishing. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you purchase the appropriate fabric. The piece that I have underneath that, this is a piece of actually quilting cotton, which I thought was really, really pretty. And it's, um, again, 100% cotton. It's a print and there is no stretch crosswise or lengthwise. And the only thing that would make this a little bit more challenging is that it's got a pattern in it. And so if you wanted to be real conscientious in your layout is you'd want to match the pattern at your side seam. But other than that, this would also be an excellent piece to sew a shirt or a blouse out of for a beginner seamstress. These pieces in the center, these are also woven fabrics, 
And the difference is, is that these are now silkies. This is a silky polyester, both of them are, and there's a lot more drape to these. And they're not difficult to sew with. They can ravel a little bit more than um, a regular cotton can. But the thing to keep in mind with sewing with silkies is that you need to have a really sharp needle in your sewing machine and just be aware of the the fact that this is, because it's thin, it can get pulled down into the throat plate of your sewing machine. And so sometimes it requires a throat plate that's got the needle hole that's a very, very small one, not one of those really wide uh, throat plates where the needle can go back and forth for zigzagging. So again, being aware of your fabric choice is really important. And then we can take a look at the next major category and that is sewing with knits. Now knits are also easy to sew with and there's a caveat there. It's that how stretchy it is and does the knit curl and some of the factors like that, but it doesn't ravel. So there's a cut edge and there's no raveling whatsoever on that. So it means it's going to be very, very easy to sew together and you don't necessarily need to seam finish it like you would with a woven fabric. And then of course with our machines like our sergers, we can uh, sew this in one fell swoop. It sews it, it uh, seam finishes it, and you know, it's great because it's really quick to sew with a knit. This is a, a medium weight Ponte Roma and I plan on doing some pull on pants with that. And then this novelty knit is going to be a loose, comfortable sweater style of jacket to go with that. And of course, there is one other category that we're seeing a lot in our fabric stores, and that is a woven fabric that's got a little bit of stretch to it. So as we take a look at these pants over here, these pants have, the fabric has, if I can pick them up, has about 4% lycra in it, and there's a little bit of give to them. Now that I've given you a little direction on fabric choice, now let's take a look at some pieces that have already been cut out. And so obviously the next thing is the layout and cutting, and I will be showing you that in another video, but for the time being, let's just pretend that I have gotten the layout done, and this is for a top that I'm going to be making, and there are the back pieces right here. Now, this is a flat one-dimensional form when it's like this. And so before we can start sewing side seams and hemming it, obviously what we need to do is stitch anything happening on the inside of it internally. So here we have a couple of darts. I'll just lay this like this. So any darts, pleats, or tucks, they are going to happen next. Here is the front of this top and you can see here I've stitched the bust darts, the waist fitting darts and now it's ready to start considering do I do the side seams next? Do I do the shoulder seams next? Well in this particular case what I'm going to be adding is an invisible zipper down the back of the garment and so what I would do is put the zipper in next, and then once the zipper is done, then I'll start working on the shoulder seams and preparing the facings. And then after the facing is added, I would do the side seams and then set in the sleeves. Now, talking about setting in sleeves, there are two ways to do it. Number one is you can sew the shoulder seams you can sew the side seams and then do an actual set-in sleeve like this, which is what you want to do when you're working with um, our blouse pattern or our dress pattern. And that's the one that I have up on the uh, wall right here. But when we, ha and, and this particular pattern, I should say, has the bust fitting dart, it's more fitted. But we also have a shirt pattern without a bust fitting dart 
And this is just going to give you a little bit looser look, a little bit more casual, comfortable design. And as we take a look at this sports shirt here, this one was in fact designed off of the shirt pattern. And so when you're putting in a real casual sleeve like this, the sleeve that comes with this shirt pattern is a lower cap and a broader sleeve to fit into this deeper arm side. Well, in that case then, you can sew your shoulder seams and then take the sleeve and set it in place uh, front to back and then sew from the hem all the way up through the underarm and up, uh, out to the bottom of the sleeve pattern. But what you'd want to consider is how is that sleeve finished? Is it a sleeve like this that's got a little band on it or has it just got a simple hem? And so you just need to think about that ahead of time because if you're going to do anything special to the bottom of the sleeve, um, you may want to do that first of all and then set the sleeve in. So the whole point of this is that you need to think through the project and follow, or shall I say not follow, but do the steps that make the most logical sense at that point in time. Because as I said earlier, you can't do the hem first until you've done the side seams. And you don't want to do the side seams until you've done the interior work. Now let's take a look at a pair of pants. And this is another good example of doing the work on the flat piece before I start stitching the side seams, inseams, and the crotch seam. And that is this double welt pocket. Now, there are also two little darts right here coming out of the waistline, and those darts needed to be sewn first because this dart bumps right up, and the tip of the dart is right at the top of the welt pocket. So, here's a situation. Darts needed to be sewn first. Then, while the fabric is still flat, nothing else has been added to it, then I'm going to sew this welt pocket. Then after that, I can't do the waistline treatment until I sew side seams and inseams together. I still can't do this waistline treatment until I've sewn the crotch and then I can finish off the waistline. And yes, of course, you do need to consider the zipper. And the zipper, in this case, is an invisible zipper and invisible zippers are set into the seam before the seam is has been sewn. So that would go in before that side seam was, was finished. And so, as I said before, it just, it's a matter of practice and experience. I know when I got my serger and I went and took some lessons on it and I was having difficulty doing curves, inner curves and outer curves. And my teacher said to me, Glenda, go home and cut 50 outer curves and 50 inner curves and sit at your serger and just sew them all day long. And she said, at the end of that, you're gonna be an expert on sewing curves. Well, that's the kind of advice that I can give you uh, for sewing any garment together. The more you do it, the easier it's going to become. But I will say this, as a beginner, don't start with the most complicated patterns. So again, let's take a look at this. This blouse right here has a princess line seam. It has a placket up the front, buttons and buttonholes. It has a collar and collar stand to it. And of course, the set in sleeve. Well, that's a more intermediate to advanced project. Whereas, if we take a look at this pullover tank top, well, now we're looking at two darts, a shoulder seam, side seam, trimming the neck, the armholes, and a hem treatment. Done. And so always evaluate your project, first of all, before you dive in as a beginner seamstress. And then the other thing that's really important as a beginner is to make sure you've got the appropriate equipment and tools available to you. Obviously, you need a good sewing machine. Do you need a serger? Well, no, you don't. It's nice, but not necessary. And the third machine that is um, something that people are asking me about is a cover stitch machine. Do you need one of those? Absolutely not. Is it great to have it? 
Absolutely yes. I sewed for years without a cover stitch machine and the cover stitch is what makes, <coughs> excuse me, what makes that double stitching or um, triple stitching that we often see in ready to wear garments and it's used primarily for hemming. And it's a great machine to have, but it's, it's not necessary. Um, if you've got the space in your sewing room and the finances to get one, well then of course, yes, it, it would be wonderful to have one. The other thing that's really important, ladies, is to make sure that you have the appropriate notions. And what do I mean by notions? Well, there are things like your shears, the, the uh, rotary cutter, your cutting board, um, the pr correct pressing tools, an iron, a good iron, an ironing board, the tailor's ham, the seam roll, all of these things are going to make your life easier when you're sewing your garment together. It's kind of like baking a cake. You can't bake the cake without having the appropriate ingredients and the correct size of cake pan. And so realize that with your sewing, the tools that you have to help you out in your project are going to be extremely important. What I'm showing you here is a SureFit Designs Sewing Notions Guide. And what I've done here for you is put together a four-page guide on what I consider some of the basics in sewing and what's appropriate to have to make your life easier as a seamstress and get your project sewn together. And for those of you who are just coming into SureFit Designs and you're new, and if you sign up for the SureFit Designs newsletter, one of the things that you're going to get as a free getting started gift is this Notions Guideline. And so please make sure you go to our website, surefitdesigns.com, and click on the links at the bottom, get signed up. There's other gifts besides this, but this is, is one of them. And I do encourage you to join our community and signing up for the newsletter is one way. Number two is make sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is just SureFit Designs. And thirdly, we now have a Facebook user, or just group page. I always call it a user group and it's just called groups. And just it's, it's Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SureFit Designs and people from all over the world are interacting with one another, showing off their projects, asking questions, and in general, stimulating one another to work with their SureFit design system. And with this beginning video series on how to sew garments together, you're gonna to be good to go for not only getting the garment to fit you properly, but how to get it all sewn together.